So inside the vehicle, imagine outside, we've put a power cable in, we've got a full tank of fresh water and we've got a gas bottle on. We now need to start waking up the vehicle and we're going to deal with the top control panel. It looks a busy screen, however, please assure it's not. Every button on the top is to switch something on. All the buttons on the bottom is just for information. So we're going to wake the vehicle up. Top left, we're going to put our master switch on. It's gone green, it's lit up, it's done our inboard check. Next one is our 12 volt. We put it on as it is there now, our blue light, so it's on. It wakes up the internal of the vehicle. If we left the lights on last time we was in the vehicle, they'll switch on. If not, we just put them on. Third one is our water pump. Switch that on to get the water coming through the taps. You can leave it on at all holiday. Last but not least on top is your outside only light that I showed you outside. So we've got three blue lights and our green light. Everything is switched on. Like I said, the ones on the bottom are just for information. As I press each one, please look on the left hand side and you'll see it illuminate. The first one will show you the state of your vehicle battery charged and illuminated on the left hand side. The second one will show you the state of your leisure battery. Again, charged, illuminated on the left hand side. The third one, very good of a night time, it will show you how much fresh water you've got in the vehicle. I put some in now just for the demonstration, obviously all the way over to the right hand side, you've got a full water tank. The last one on the bottom, it just shows you the brightness and dimness of the control panel. Might be too dark of a night time or too bright, so you can turn it up and turn it down. Now I've pressed all four of those and hopefully you can see on the left hand side, the bottom one is illuminating. It's showing us our waste water is almost full, just where I've been demonstrating and trying all those um, functions, so it's full. So we will go outside now and drain it down. Any questions on that control panel? No? Good. Moving on then. Before we go in and start putting our hot water and central heating on, what we need to do is called priming our tap. We've got our master switch on, we've got our pump on, so we go to the tap and we put our hot water tap on. Only cold water is coming through, but to begin with, it wouldn't do that. It would spit, sputter, get water everywhere, and all it's doing is drawing all the air out of the system and then filling up with cold water. Once we've done that, we know we've got cold water in there and it's, we can carry on with the next practice. On to our Truma heating. What we simply do is press the big button to wake it up. The first one flashing there, a picture of a motorhome with a thermometer inside it, it's our central heating. Press the big button to go into it. We can have our central heating off, a minimum of five degrees, or in the heat of the winter, we can go up to 30 degrees inside here, lovely and warm inside the motorhome. So we want it at 19 degrees, turn it to 19, press it, that's now set at 19 degrees. Nothing we need to do unless we want to turn it up or turn it down. That on the right hand side is the regulator for it, just like in a normal house, it will regula regulate the heating all day. Turn the dial slightly to the thermometer flashing, this is our hot water. Again, press it to go into it, we can have our hot water off, eco, which is 40 degrees, hot which is 60 degrees or boost it to hot when you first get to the campsite for hot water quickly or if you're having a shower. Leave it on hot, that's now set. Turn the dial again, gas bottle and lightning strikes. Now this is what type of power you want to use inside the vehicle. Press it to go into it, you can have your central heating and hot water working on gas while camping in the middle of the field, happy days. Mix one, one kilowatt of electric and a bit of gas if need be. Mix two, up to three kilowatts of electric and a bit of gas if need be. Electric one, one kilowatt. Electric two, up to three kilowatts of electric. Last but not least, a picture of a fan on there. Please don't confuse it with aircon. It's not, it's blown heating. So whatever temperature you've got your heating on, that's what it's blowing around the vehicle. And you can have it on eco, nice and gently, or you can have it on high and it'll boost it around the motorhome faster. Moving on round, I'll now show you a couple of component parts within the motorhome. Above the oven, you've got your extractor fan, left hand side lights, right hand side extractor actually taking it out of the vehicle. There's two things that won't work in the motorhome if you're wild camping. One being your electric ring, the second being your microwave. You have to be on your electric hookup to use those two. I'll show you the gas working on the top. 
and there we are absolutely fantastic and i've tried the oven it's an oven and grill i've showed you the water coming through on the taps absolutely fantastic every window has got a fly screen from the top and a blackout screen from the bottom point to the note you've got a push button in the center of them which you have to press in to release the window it's more added security moving on round into the bathroom area Again, just to show you, the water is working inside here. Absolutely fantastic. Bit of storage up top. Point to note again, your light switch for the bathroom and shower area is on the left-hand side of the cupboard and a little switch just there. To operate the shower, unhook it from the wall on that side and from the rear. You've then got your one from the front. I won't do it now and be rude. And then most importantly, you've got your one to cover the toilet so the toilet's not getting something wet. To operate the toilet, you can use it in whatever position you want to. Point to the note on the front of it is your opening and closing of the toiletries. So you open it, do your business, press your flush. Once it's all gone away, close it back off. Into the rear bedroom, your nice big double bed. However, underneath the double bed, you can see the mattress is purposely slit into two. You can then fold it in half, flip up the bottom, and on the bottom of it, you've got a leg that you can then score in position to gain access underneath. As you can see underneath there, that's where your spare wheel is situated. Pull it down, pull the wheel, the wheel out. Underneath, you've got a little bit of storage compartment. And that there is your storage of your hot water that we filled and is now filled with hot water. I've showed you outside how to fill your fresh water, drain your fresh water and drain your dirty water. We now need to drain our hot water. And to do that on the right hand side, very difficult to see, but it is in the instruction manual. Where my finger is there now, there's a box. And again, all you need to do is turn the valve. To drain it, you do one thing. You turn the blue button to open it up. However, to drain it and lock it back off, you have to turn the valve back to the same position and then press the blue button in. Like so. Point to note though, if you do forget to drain the hot water and you park it up, if the temperature drops below three degrees inside the van, it will think you're not using it and automatically dump it. Nice off head storage with night lighting that you can switch on and off in the rear bedroom. Nice little wardrobe inside there. Inside there, that's all your niceties and Karen will sort that out with you. Above the microwave, a little compartment. However, two boxes on top of there. The left hand one, the black box with a flashing light, that is your Truma iNet box. What can you do with it? You can buy a pay-as-you-go SIM card and you can put it into the top of the box. You can then download the free app onto your phone. You can then send a text from your phone to the box to turn the heating up, heating down. It's like a mini hive. What you can also do, as you can see there, you can connect your phone to the Bluetooth, giving the vehicle Bluetooth capability. Box on the right hand side, the white box with the red light, that is your TV booster box. As soon as you put your master switch on, that starts working boosting the signal from your aerial into that box, into your TV sockets. I'm not going to talk about it too much, but there's your microwave. All the user manuals that comes with it. You've then got your three-way fridge. Power button is on the left-hand side. Keep it pressed in and it will switch it off. At the moment, we've got it on automatic. So it's automatically choosing electric as the best power. If we have a power cut, it will automatically go over onto the gas. If we then disconnect the electric and disconnect the gas, it will automatically go over onto the vehicle battery, but it won't work until the vehicle is running. If we want to manually change it, press the square button. The A has gone off. It's only working on electric now. Again, we can manually put it onto just gas. Again. A 
as we've got there, it is flashing. It's a good opportunity to show you what's working and what's not working. If it does flash like that, it's telling us that there's a problem. What's the problem? I've actually gone outside and turned the gas off. So if at any stage it does start flashing, please check components within the vehicle. Moving on around to the front area, we've got a front lounge. We've got two traveling seats, absolutely fantastic. We've got more storage up above. Underneath each one, you've got LED lighting, which is switched on and off on the left hand, on the right hand side. And on the rear wall, you've got two USB ports and a three pin plug to give you electric in the front right of the vehicle. And on the front left of the vehicle, two more USB ports, a three pin plug, and your light switch for your drinks cabinet. Up top is your drinks cabinet and glasses where it'll go. Underneath, you've got your nice little hideaway cupboard that you can gain access inside there. You've got your traveling seat, another traveling seat on the side. However, we can move the cushions. And underneath there is where on the front, by opening the box, is your master fuses and trip switches, just like in any house. And behind is all your other components. However, on the right hand side is the control panel for your solar panel. What's the solar panel doing at the moment? Absolutely nothing, because we're hooked up on the electric. Point to note, if you want the solar panel to work when you're on storage or if it's just parked on the driveway, all you need to do is go back to the control panels. So it's the end of the holiday, we're gonna keep our finger on the bottom one and switch it off completely. There, it says off, that's now off completely. We'll turn our outside light off, we'll turn our water pump off, we'll turn our 12 volts on, but we have to leave our master switch on for the solo panel to work. If we switch that off as well, so everything comes off in the vehicle, the solar panel is sat upstairs, not doing nothing. So please remember that. Last but not least, in the habitation area, I have to show you by law, both the smoke alarm working, and carbon oxide, because we've got gas in the vehicle. That's the rear of the vehicle. What I'll do now is we'll go into the front of the vehicle and a couple of components to show you in the front.